The coach Avery Johnson back in to break this one down. Coach, uh, not much to pick apart here in the second half. Sort of decided there in the third quarter. When we think of Memphis this season, it's really scoring and intensity. They had both of those things really clicking here in game two better than they did in game one. What was your major takeaway from this one? Well, I've been talking on CBS Sports HQ all day long uh, when we were setting the table for this game that Memphis needed to improve their defense. Uh, Minnesota had three quarters in game one where they scored 30 or more points. Mm. Only one quarter tonight, the first quarter, where they scored uh, 30 p plus points. So give Memphis credit. They play much better defense, especially on Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards and Carl Towns combined for 10 turnovers. Much better defense for Memphis. They got, you know, they got John Moran out in the open court. He did his damage before he came up with somewhat of a little bit of a thigh bruise. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit of so soreness in that left thigh uh, after this game. But also Jaron Jackson, he was tremendous. His three-point shooting, especially now that they've basically eliminated Stephen Adams from this rotation because they're so deep, they're still 10 or 11 deep. Uh, give Jaron Jackson credit. Just an overall outstanding team effort from Memphis and it started at the defensive end. Yeah, they really seemed committed to that end of the floor and it really was the big difference here because from game one to game two, a buck 30 down to 96, you're looking at a 34 point difference in offensive output here from Minnesota. Outside of the defense and just the inability to put the ball in the cup, where were some of those inefficiencies on the offensive end for the Timberwolves? Well, I, I just think D'Angelo Russell, he's got to play better, especially when he's playing against a guy like John Morant. Sometimes we always talk about, you know, how do you slow down a player like a John Morant? How do you guard him in pick and rolls, isolations? When he wants to get downhill, go into his left hand. Uh, his three-point shooting was pretty effective tonight. But how do you really slow down guys like John Morant? You got to attack him when he's on the defensive end. Mm. And I just thought D'Angelo Russell was basically mediocre offensively tonight. He wasn't the aggressor. Uh, he's got to figure out a way to try to get John Moran in foul trouble the same way he did with especially a guy like Jaron Jackson Jr. in the first game. But if John Moran's going to be allowed to guard guys like Patrick Beverly and just put, sit in a zone and not use any energy on the defensive end, that's going to be problematic. So D'Angelo Russell's got to get it going. You got to figure out a way to get John Morant switched on you defensively, put some pressure on him, get your three-point shooting into the game, and then the combination of Russell, Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, those guys in this series going to have to be around combined for 60-plus points for Minnesota to have a chance to advance and beat the Memphis Grizzlies in this series. Well, it is now a best of five moving to Minnesota. Our friends of the desert giving the Grizz the decided advantage, and we always have an advantage when the coach is here. Thank you, coach. Here's a look at that series schedule. Game three coming your way from Minnesota on Thursday. So travel day Wednesday, get back to it Thursday, 730 Eastern. Game four scheduled for Saturday with, again, just a one-day layoff, and then It'll head back to the Grindhouse for Game 5 on April 26th. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.